Welcome to today's lecture. This is analysis of 3OA spool and flapper nozzle valves. This means that we shall consider 3OA spool valve as well as 3OA flapper nozzle valves. <coughs> In last lectures, we have already learned about the 4OA critical center valves we have learned general design analysis of four way valves which is mostly applicable for servo valves now <coughs> the figure 10.361 this is figure 1 it shows the three way spool valve and uh, this must be used with an unequal area piston to provide directional reversal. Now, what is three way valve? Uh, we know that what is four way valve, but um, a four way valve normally which are used uh, for the motion control that is we con control the velocity we control the position, we control also pressure there. In that case, normally uh, the direction reversal are not frequent or in other words, uh, although directional reversal is done, it is it is uh, the scope is there because it is a four way valve, but it is usually connected to uh, rotary uh, actuators. and uh, normally we do not go for reversal frequently. On the other hand, if we would like to go for a reversal, in that case three way with the load cylinder this arrangement is the best. Now, again this valve may be um, critical center or uh, may be a open center, closed center valve means overlap valves are not desired because of the um, longer bandwidth at the middle. However, critical center valves are mostly preferred although in true sense it is very difficult to uh, maintain uh, uh, that condition that critical valve critical center valve positions uh, usually uh, it requires frequent uh, null adjustment null adjustment however we shall discuss uh, about that we will look into the critical center three way valve now how it is working if we look into this this is the supply now once the instead of uh, four way valve in case of three valve supply is one to the valve one end and other end directly to the rod and side of the pistons. So, if we keep this is close then uh, this will simply move upward directions. Now, so let us consider if we keep it open then in that case what will happen the flow is going like this and the flow is also coming in this way and if you think of the regenerative principle and you will find that this will move in this directions and as well as some flow is going out this is for the control purpose this is the in servo valve it always happens. Now, the rod and head side we call this is head side and uh, this is rod side. Okay. Now, if we look into this, this area is designated by A H and this area is designated by A R.
Now, the rod and head side areas of the piston should be such that a steady state control pressure P C O is the console control pressure of about half of the uh, system pressure P S. Uh, now, this P C O or simply P C we need half of that for the better control. This means that uh, we can express this control uh, pressure uh, is equal to P S that, that is the system pressure by 2 that is desired. Now, for that what we would do? Ideally it happens at area ratio half, what does it mean? That uh, the head area of piston A H is double the rod end area A R. That means, here the A R is the area is the annulus area. The head area means the full area. So, full area should be double of that annular area. That can be done, there is no um, difficult to do such things, but uh, you should not confuse here that this does not mean the area is sorry the diameter of the rod is half of the piston area, it is not the area is half you have to keep in mind. So, usually you will find that what usually you will find that this is also looking very thick because this more than half of that uh, uh, I mean this this diameter is more than half of the piston area. Anyway, this this area ratio is maintained half ideally or in other words the rod area is half of the cylinder area this is just um, we can express in the uh, form of formula like this a h is equal to 2 a r. These, these valves are made critical center for better response in servo control. Do you understand my point? <coughs> I told that maintaining the this the critical center is difficult. This means that to make such valve critical center both this groove dimension of the groove not only the width of the groove, but also the distance between these two group should match with the distance of this pool. And in fact, I would say matching these two dimensions in two different components is difficult. And it is normally in practice if it is used for spool uh, sorry the servo control valve in that case this pool and this uh, this is called sleeve actually you will find in a body there is a separate sleeve is used for um, this uh, outer member. In that case these are made match parts that means say 10 set of uh, spool and 10 set of outer members are taken together and then each and every spool which is matched with the outer member and then it is examined that really how much critical center it is. It, it uh, best pair is taken from one valve then perhaps next one in that way it uh, may happen in a 10 sets of uh, these two components these pairs 5 components may be rejected also. This is one thing second thing when it is uh, in under operations then uh, this uh, adjustment with the because this is driven by some actuator this might be um, electrical solenoid. Mm. Now, adjustment with the solenoid positions and this pool positions because the solenoid is not directly coupled uh, it is it will be directly coupled, but not a single component 
the, uh, the solenoid spool and this spool is not directly not an integral part they are just connected. So, sometimes this uh, it deviates from this critical center positions and that can be adjusted of course. Now, it is found that critical because um, as I told this is for reversal operations that means, it is um, some operations it is doing uh, forward and backward. So, if there is a if it is a overlap valve then there will be difficult for uh, position controlling or maybe this reversal time controlling. So, in that way critical uh, center valve is better. Now, for that critical center valve if you recall our earlier analysis general analysis for this whole valve then this can be uh, written as the load flow can be written in the form of uh, coefficient of discharge into A1 is the area of this orifice and uh, then 2 divided by this is the uh, density of the oil and uh, then pre P1 minus P2 here is the P2 and here is the P1. Remember P2 is not equal to P0 P2 is the pressure here and uh, this P1 is the pressure here. So, uh, we can further write this equation that C D into W x B x B is the uh, that uh, the spool stroke it is called stroke the stroke A is x B. Now, W is what is W? W is the peripheral uh, diameter uh, sorry periphery of the this you can say this uh, spool length. Okay this diameter into 2 pi sorry pi into this diameter will give w. Now, this means that this is we are considering the rectangular port. Now, w is written as you if you remember in general terms sometimes uh, instead of this continuous this this group is continuous instead of this continuous group uh, some rectangular holes are provided. If these uh, this is off with a rectangular holes say 4, 5, 6 holes over the periphery and that are usually expressed. In that case also we can use this formula is equal to w because that w in that case width of that each groove each hole through uh, the sleeves plus the number of such grooves. Anyway, this into the stroke length will give uh, the total area open there that is the orifice area and so this this is the equation uh, we can write for the load flow. But when uh, this is in the opposite direction that is that means it is moving in the from downward directions in that case this equation simply written as we will consider the A2 and this is again we will find that it is in the opposite directions and in that case only there will be the control pressure that means, we are getting only control pressure over there. Okay. Now, uh, we can plot that what equations we have written there we can plot to study such a valve performance of a valve uh, better to plot such graph and then uh, we can understand that how it is performing. Now, it is same as in case of four way valve except the change in abscissa scale. If you remember uh, in uh, Oh, what we have already studied the four way valve in that case you will find uh, in this axis P c by P s is equal to 0 here and then it is varying in these directions negative and varying in these directions positive that is for the um, 
from left hand side uh, uh, to the right hand side of this spool. In that case, we simply use this uh, value in this abscissa. Now, here this is written in the dimensionless form, form, this is also in the dimensionless form and we can observe these are the for different x b by x uh, maximum. Okay. So, this ratio, so all are in dimensionless form and what we find we should call this is the null positions, okay. this is the null position. Now, at null q l is equal to 0, x b is equal also 0, no here it is the x b is 0 is here, not that this is in the 4 way valve you will find this is the 0 position whereas, this is the 0 position for uh, flow and as well as for uh, the no we have considered x b is equal to 0 that means, this is the 0. So, this might be the curve okay, at null positions. Now, um, there what we find the control pressure P c is P s by 2 because we have taken the area ratio to so, um, at that condition P s by P c by P s is equal to 2 that means, P c by P s is equal to 0 0.5 this means here. Okay. What we consider that Q l is equal to 0 and our control pressure is here at null position. Therefore, the valve coefficients at null positions of three way critical center spool valve can be written as from this if you uh, uh, have attended the earlier classes then you can find that q l by uh, del, del q l by del x b not theta l this is del q l. Okay. <coughs> this is del q hmm, q l by t. So, this is flow gain that means, how much gain will be there at null positions this depends on that uh, mm. critical center or open center and this ultimately can be written in this form. Next uh, we will look into the flow pressure coefficient, the flow pressure coefficient is uh, written in this form this is w this also will be w not omega mm, okay now the pressure sensitivity can be written in this form now what we find that at null positions due to looking into this curve this will be zero whereas the pressure sensitivity which is uh, uh, actually this divided by this mm, that will become infinity because this will have some value whereas, this will become infinity which means pressure sensitivity at the null positions is uh, infinity means highly sensitive at the null position. Now, the flow gain is same if you look into the 4 way valve flow gain, what we will find in this uh, this 3 way valve is also flow gain is same, but pressure sensitivity is half that of 4 way critical center valve. This is from the equations, you have to compare the equations of those I have not shown here and um, uh, the equations of 3 way valve. Therefore, the error, error to overcome loads will be more. Now, this we should understand that as the sensitivity is, is half of the 4 way critical valve then the error will be more in case of 3 way valve. This means that again 
although the three way valve is simpler in construction and it is very uh, good for using uh, selecting such valve in case of uh, the reversal operations uh, that is for the mostly for the linear actuator, but what is there the error uh, will be more that means to rectify such error we have need much stronger better control controller than the four way valve. It also can be shown that the dynamic load errors are almost double this uh, due to this factor that limits the application of three way servo valve. So, three way servo valve you will find normally for the um, of course, I would say the machine tools and uh, at many places these are used, but if we uh, look into the time response that means, we need very quick actions suppose we are trying to position control very accurately and with almost no time real time control in that case possibly we have to go for four way valve even if for if there are uh, frequent reversal operations. Now, hydro mechanical servos where greater errors are tolerable the source positioning is mechanical and quite steep compared with the force loads imposed by the spool. For this reason in case of such a system three way valve the force equation describing the spool motion is usually important and flow forces are not of interest. Usually uh, what uh, um, we have seen that uh, flow force has significant roles on the controlling of the spool in servo mechanism. Now, in that case the argument is that the as these are uh, we are tolerating the er errors and the source positioning is mechanical quite steep compared with the force loads. Uh, so, in that case we can go for three way valve where the um, flow forces not that significant. Now, um, this is I have given you uh, the idea of uh, three way spool valve. Now, similarly there are three way flap and nozzle valve also. In flap and nozzle valve uh, we will see some advantage over the uh, spool valve. First of all it is less expensive, uh, but mostly allowing high, high higher leak leakage losses such valves are of low cost and less sensitive to dirt. This means that usually such orifice and uh, you will find this flapper is moving that thereby this uh, flapper area is being controlled the dart can easily go out. Mm. So, therefore, it is better than the three wheel spool valve however, always there will be leakage loss and that we should take care of. And obviously, the cost is because making of a spool is will be more expensive than such flapper valve. Flapper driven by torque motor, this is usually you will find that a torque motor will be uh, used there. What is torque motor? In, we know this motor principles, in that case, armature is such that with this armature it will generate some torque with the current. If we increase the current, then the more torque will be there. If we decrease the current, so there will be less torque. This is very common in the pilot stage of two flow control valve in including servo valves. Now, if we look into the, the four uh, way servo control valve you will find in the first stage there is two stage actually because to drive the main spool we need much force and sometimes what happens that uh, there is a first stage valve 
which through which the flow hydraulic oil goes to control the uh, main spool. In that case, you will find this first stage usually made of flapper nozzle. But here I would like to mention we will see that that flapper nozzle is normally it is by double flapper. That means on the other side also there will be such nozzle and flow is coming this way and from the other way. But this is uh, what I have shown here this is a single one and we will our basic analysis will be done only on the single one. Here also we have taken this uh, um, cylinder with the same 1 is to 2 ratio. Okay. The pressure flow curves have better linearity. Also performance of these devices are quite predictable and dependable. Now we shall consider the analysis uh, of a single jet flapper valve. It is also called sometimes the 3 way flapper valve okay. because of this principle the same we have seen the same principle is used for the spool valve also. Now the flow through a fixed orifice of area A0 in the upstream is modulated by moving the flapper to generate a desired control pressure P C. Now, here we will find that a fixed orifice A 0 is provided. Now, flow is going through this. Now, this flow can further be controlled by moving this flapper. If we move this one, this will be closed. You will find that pressure will increase. Then due to this increase in pressure here, here the system pressure is remain same. There will be less amount of flow and this will be controlled. Hmm. Whereas, in this direction there is no orifice. So, upstream means this, this we are calling the upstream flow. The curtain area is more important than the flapper nozzle orifice area. Now, this what is called curtain area? Now, this we would call this is the nozzle area and this area the which is closing this and this is called curtain area. Okay. So, this we have to know one is called curtain area and another is called simply orifice area. Orifice area is this one and curtain area is uh, uh, what I would say that if I consider the uh, this periphery over here into this depth. Say this is initially x f o this height into the periphery that means pi into um, diameter here into this that area is important than this orifice area. The working range of the control pressure is estimated by obtaining the block load characteristics expression of uh, mathematical model are shown in uh, next slides and also we will look into this uh, block load characteristics. Now, from the flow equations what we know that q 1 will be q 2 plus load flow. That means, if we consider that this flow is q 1 then that must be equal to one load is going this way and another load is coming uh, another flow sorry the flow is being divided into a part is for the moving the load a part from the um, from from the uh, just exhaust. Now, just controlling this one we can control this flow also. So, speed and control is also done by uh, controlling this flapper. Flows are expressed following the orifice equations as follows. Now, the orifice equation is uh, same only thing in this case what we consider that uh, A 0 is the area this is pi by 4 d o d o is the diameter here. 
Okay. Now, this is the system pressure and this is the control pressure over here. So, um, this is the flow Q 1 total flow. No, D 0 is the diameter of this orifice sorry A 0 is the orifice here. So, we are uh, writing the equations for this orifice okay. um, which is simply this is obviously, we have considered a circular hole and normally it will be circular hole. There is no reason making of other shapes neither rectangular nor elliptical or so simply a drill hole you can consider. Now, Q 2 this flow is equal to A f uh, area of we should call this is the cutting area and that becomes pi d n x f 0 minus x f that is the cotton height and c d f. Okay. The d n diameter is actually this, this diameter uh, this is may be drawn uh, in a wide way. d n is the diameter here not this diameter hmm. diameter of this orifice. So, d n. So, pi d n this periphery into the current cotton height will give us the orifice area here. So, q 2 is expressed in this way and here the P c is the pressure in the upstream and in the downstream is the exhaust pressure which is normally 0. That is why this is uh, here we find two pressure turn where only one single pressure turn. Okay. Now, x f 0 is the initial gap between the flapper surface and the nozzle when the flapper is in equilibrium. Now, look at that we should should take care of the direction of S f x f x f is the movement of the flapper which is positive in the upward directions. Okay. So, this means when it is moving in the upward directions this curtain height is being reduced because this is positive and here we have minus sign, but suppose it is moving in the opposite direction do not forget to put x f itself is a minus. So, total cotton height will increase and total area will also increase. X f is the flapper displacement which is positive towards the nozzle. Essentially, when there is no load, there is no load flow that means, it is no load flow then q 1 is equal to q 2 or in other words if there is a it this is not moving that means, we we want that it should not move, but still this is open then whole uh, the oil coming in that should go out in that condition q 1 is equal to q 2 and p c by p a s if we um, write in that way this will become um, this will be expressed in this form. The plot of above equation that is the block load characteristic it is called block load characteristics this can be presented in this form. Okay. So, if this is the this ratio is varying from 0 to 2.8. Now, how it can be 0? The A f itself 0 this area is equal to 0. How this, this means that this is completely closed hmm. that means x f in positive direction is equal to x f 0. In that conditions what we will find that p c is equal to p s okay, this is 1. Now, if we this extreme case what we have considered 
that in that case of course, this is the ratio remember C here to make this is 0 we can consider A f itself 0, but this ratio when this is this has some value then this ratio depends on the coefficient of discharge area etcetera. However, what we find this is of course, for a particular valve what we find at 2.8 of this ratio that P c by P s is 0.1 only that means, control pressure is uh, 10 times less than the system pressure. Okay. So, this diagram is useful for uh, to find out the operating conditions. Now, looking into the graph it is apparent that P c by P s is equal to 0 0.6 is a good value for stability point of view. Now, uh, how, how, how why we say this value is uh, from stability point of view? This is because of the reasons that uh, if we move in this directions then definitely we will find that control pressure is much much lower than the system pressure. and in that conditions we do not have much control over this load. So, what we find that possibly if we be here then this is of course, this is simply a just a comment may be this was found by the analysis that at that conditions the operation will be the best. Whereas, if we if we enter in this zone say this is 0 0.6 if this is 0.8 perhaps this is 0 0.6 or this is 0.4 this one must be 0 0.6 PCH is equal to 0 0.6 is this one here it is 0 0.8 this is considered as a stable conditions stability point of view. If it is in this side what you will find that uh, controllability will be difficult because it needs uh, more accuracy whereas, in that case controllability will be difficult due to, to the fact uh, that uh, the control pressure is too low. Considering this as a criteria for design the orifice ratio at the null point is derived as Now, this value we would like to put 1 because this pressure we want half P c by P s is half. So, that means, this we would like to put 1. So, this ultimately derived into in this form and then it can be shown that it is good for um, it is a good objective for both 3 way and 4 way. 4 way means double jet. Remember, when there is another nozzle in the opposite directions, which we call the double jet, this will be the 4 way flapper valves. Hmm. Uh, this criteria also depicts that the system with the piston and 3 way valve needs the working piston of area ratio 1 is to 2 for best performance and optimum drift. Now, this about this drift we should go to the to know more about this drift we can consult the reference to which I will show later, but uh, what is drift? Drift means that um, while we are using such three valve three uh, way valves then we are uh, moving the load both in plus minus uh, directions. So, this means that it is operating something and in most of the cases you may find this is operating another spool. Now, what is drift you will find that when this is at the central positions this spool this piston cylinder what we have called, but this is basically controlling a spool that should be in such a position that that spool is also in the null positions, but due to 
the uh, the leakage and error what ha it happens when this is in the mid positions this may be what it is controlling that is in not in the null positions so this null position and that null positions may not match so that is called drift now there is also technique that we can control the drift also okay but this is important however we are not analyzing the drift this to know about this drift we should control these references the equation for pressure flow curves can be derived by equation 8 and substitute equation 9 and into 10 and then this uh, this equations become uh, like this so this is for the pressure flow curve we derive this equations you just substitute this and you can uh, arrive into these equations now similarly substituting 12 and 13 we get these equations okay now we can perhaps uh, if we look into this uh, equation then this is plotted here in this curve and this plot of pressure flow characteristics is finally expressed in 14 and this is presented here now if we look into this in this case also this is same as the spool valve uh, so, abscissa is same as it is uh, um, different from the four way valve, but here only we have considered only one side of this curve. In that case, obviously, this flow is uh, uh, this is 0 because the load flow can take in both the directions, and what we find that uh, x a by x f 0 is uh, here. So, this is basically the null positions no sorry this is coming over here this is the null positions where whereas, uh, for uh, the movement of x f in both the directions we get different curve. Okay. So, from there we can find out the uh, valve coefficients. Now, if we differentiate 14 and evaluate at x f is equal to q l is equal to 0 that is for the um, null positions uh, and p c by p s is equal to t 2 sorry p c by p s is equal to 1 by 2 then we get the valve co coefficient at null positions and these are we can find uh, we can express in this form and null uh, uh, flow pressure coefficients uh, is expressed by this as well the pressure sensitivity is expressed by uh, these equations. Now, this is important to know the null for each and every valve for 3 way 4 way. So, null coefficients are important to understand how better is the valve in uh, performance. The leakage or center flow at null is given by these equations. Now, here in, in it is important although it is a uh, center uh, sorry this is a critical center valve, but still there will be some flow some leakage flow if you uh, we have earlier discussed about the central flow the central flow is important for a valve because that uh, uh, affects the flow gain okay but uh, this leakage can be expressed in this form obviously in case of flapper nozzle there will be leakage because we uh, we should not say the critical center flapper nozzle valve because these two nozzles by no means will sit on this flapper because there will be some gap this means that there will be leakage so knowing this central flow is important for this flapper 
valve. Now, the striking force by the flow from the nozzle can be derived as um, in this form. We will we shall also discuss in the next lecture. Now, what is striking force? The striking force means this when the flow is coming on, then this is striking on this flapper, which is ultimately required to estimate how much torque is required. Okay. So, this F1 is estimated by this formula. With very small gap, if we make this gap is very small, that is in the null positions or maybe in the even in the operations while we are moving this xf in this directions, this gap is being reduced. Then, for uh, very small gap, what we will find f1 is equal to pc into an. What is an? An is the simply this area, not the cutting area. Okay. It is observed that with the increase in x f 0 x f minus x f that is that that uh, gap, the force f 1 increases due to the jet force and may become as large as twice p c into a n. Now, look into this normally if the gap is small this force is p c into a n whereas, if this gap is increased this force become double. So, um, or in other words I would say this we are equating here, but in other words I would say this flapper valve are designed in such a way you will find that with small gap f 1 is equal to this and with the maximum displacement of or the maximum with the maximum gap with the maximum increase in this this force become double or in other words within this range we design the um, torque motor. Okay. So, torque motor is selected in such a way that there will be twice the torque from the minimum torque required to operate this valve. However, in practice that x f 0 by d n, d n is the diameter here is usually 1 by 16. So, suppose if uh, d n uh, is equal to uh, say what I would say 1.6 uh, millimeter diameter of the or if this nozzle is 1.6 millimeter in uh, in that case x f 0 is only 0 0.1 millimeter 0 0.1 millimeter 0 0.1 millimeter you can imagine is very small. So, and again we are giving the motion of that. So, this motion is uh, very small and uh, very uh, precision and f 1 remains close to p c into a n. Differentiating equation 19 at a null point we get uh, this expression d f 1 by d x 0 is this much then this is equivalent to the spring coefficient of a fluid spring. Okay. If you compare this we can if we consider the mechanical uh, spring this is as if a fluid spring with this much of stiffness, but it is a negative spring what does it mean? What is negative spring? So, in normally uh, with the increase in when when this is the gradually when it is being compressed mechanical spring the load is increasing here it is opposite. This cause a destabilization okay, due to this negative nature a destabilization is observed. However, the effect is small and flapper drive 
is made sufficiently robust to handle this uh, situation. This means that while we are designing this torque motor, we have to consider this part and it should be robust so that it can handle uh, such uh, destabilization. For uh, balancing providing a small piston or spring on the opposite side is common. Sometimes a spring is used in the opposite side that is for the flapper nozzle. What happens to if uh, um, for the if there is double nozzle? In that case you will usually find a springs are used here in both directions. Okay. In case of single nozzle you can use this spring directly opposite otherwise you can use also a coil spring for both directions. In double jet four way flapper valve balancing is done by opposite jet. Uh, in this means that in case of opposite jet if there is another nozzle in the opposite direction sometimes we do not need any spring at all because this can be balanced by the opposite one. Okay. Now, we shall continue our lecture in the we shall discuss more about this flapper nozzle valve in the next lecture. Uh, for this lecture, um, the mostly I have uh, taken from the this merits book, which is hydraulic control systems. Also, particularly to know about the drift, this paper is important. So you can go through this paper, and there are some general idea from the Blackburn um, book of Blackburn and. Uh, report and share. Uh, thank you for listening.